Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Mary Mac. Today we have a couple of squash recipes for you, some good side dishes for fall and Thanksgiving and that sort of thing, or just all around good dishes. Either one of these is also good as kind of like a, a lunch thing, you know, just to take a large amount of it in your lunch because they're both really good. So the first one is squash and apples. The squash in this recipe is a butternut squash. You could also use a pie pumpkin in this, and if you're not, like, there's a lot of varieties of squash, okay? Some of them are better to eat than others. <laughs> But I guess the thing with pumpkins is you can use any pumpkin to eat. The ones that I prefer, like if you were planning on using for pumpkin pie filling or something like that, are the pumpkins that are the dark orange pumpkins that almost look like they have little flecks of brown on them. They look a little spicy, I guess you'd say. Those are the ones that I prefer to use. Those would be good in this kind of recipe or butternut squash, or any type of orange squash. Butternut squashes are great, and if you haven't eaten them or used them for anything, the butternut squash is typically what pumpkin pie filling is made of that you, you know, buy in the store in a can. But a butternut squash is good just on its own. It's good sliced and baked with just a little bit of butter or uh, vegan spread on, and raw sugar or brown sugar, and it's also good if you cook it and mash it and use it in different recipes or just to eat. It's just a really good squash, and they keep really well. So I say all that to say this. I got the butternut squash from hell when I went to uh, make this up because I hadn't made squash and apples in a little while, and I didn't have a picture of it. So I had this butternut squash, and I literally could not break through the skin of it. I, I'm not sure. I was debating on going out to the shed and using my bandsaw, seriously, because I could not get through. So be real careful when you're cutting one, because some of them have a very hard skin, which is why they keep well. This one was, um, I, I couldn't even peel it. I have a large variety of knives at my house, and I went, I in my sink when I was done, I had five knives in my sink because I could not break through. So what I ended up doing was um, cutting into it with a big serrated knife and then jamming a butter knife into the slot and putting pressure down on it to crack it open more, and then into the slot, I put a big vegetable chopping knife and carefully leaned my weight on it to break it in half because I never actually sliced it. So, so yes, this is what you may encounter making this, but it is well, well worth it. So here's the method to do this particular recipe and really to cook uh, butter. This is what you would want to do for um, a butternut squash or a pumpkin or anything. So you want to get your squash and I used Probably, and it was an average size squash. It was about 10 inches tall and about four inches around at the fat part. And what you want to do is scrub the outside of the squash real good. Like I've mentioned this before with melons and things like that. You know, they're just, they're, they're grown out there in the garden and they're brought to market in a big wooden box probably. And, you know, they've just been out there. So scrub it really good before you try to cut it. Then what you want to do is don't try and peel them because the peels are really hard and it's a little tricky. I mean, you could really cut yourself pretty well. So what I did with this, and I'll have pictures up on our Facebook page, our Mary Mac Bakehouse Facebook page, but I took the squash and I broke it in half, hacked it in half, and then I broke those two halves in half again. I cleaned out the seeds really well. And then I um, basically, I cut the squash into eight pieces and I took a baking sheet, covered it with foil and took my squash and just rinsed each piece off so that it would be damp. I put it on the foil and then I covered the whole baking sheet with foil. I didn't put any seasonings or butter, nothing like that on it, just the squash and some water. And I put it in the oven on 350 for an hour, which... What that does is it doesn't bake the squish to mush. <laughs> it actually just cooks it enough that you can get it out of the skin. And it's, it's really easy when you do that. You just um, take it out of the oven after an hour and let it cool. 
and then very carefully take each piece and take a paring knife or um, even you can even use like a serving size spoon and just pop that flesh right out of the skin. And then you've got your flesh. It's not mushy. It's still reasonably solid, but it's cooked. Okay. So that's what we're going to work with is that cooked flesh that we've allowed to, you know, cool and remove from the skin. Next, you're going to need three to four medium sized apples, either like a golden delicious or a Brayburn, or if you're really a Granny Smith lover, you can use those. I think they're a little too tart to use in something like this because we're not going to be using much sugar at all. So I would say like, a, like I said, like a golden delicious or even like a um, ginger gold. So three to four medium apples, peeled, cored, and chopped into chunks, about half inch square chunks. And then uh, you want to cut your squash up into about the same size chunk, like a one inch to a half inch chunk. Okay. And have them in two separate bowls because we're going to layer these. So what you want to do is get about a two quart to four quart baking dish and then put in a layer of squash, a layer of apples, a layer of squash, and a layer of apples. So you'll have two layers of squash, two layers of apples. Try to split them evenly. Okay, now for the topping on this, we're going to take two tablespoons of butter or margarine or dairy-free spread and melt them and drizzle them over the top of your fruit. And you can kind of, you know, stir it around a little bit if you want to just to get it kind of spread out through everything. Then you're going to mix together a half a cup of brown sugar and a half teaspoon of apple pie spice. If you don't have apple pie spice, you can substitute uh, this mixture, a fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, an eighth teaspoon of nutmeg, and an eighth teaspoon of allspice, and mix those up and add, because that's basically, that's what um, apple pie spice is, so... And then a fourth teaspoon of salt. Mix that up and sprinkle that all over the top of your cubed up squash and apples. Then you're going to put this into the oven. Put the um, If your dish doesn't have a lid, put foil over the top of it. And put that in the oven and bake it for one hour at 350. So when you get it done, you can take the lid off and leave it in the oven for about 10 more minutes if you want to, just to kind of brown up the apples and squash it around the top a little bit. You don't have to do that. It's a dish that you want to serve warm. It's really, really good. It smells when you um, are baking that, when you take it out of the oven, it smells like cider. I mean, when you pull it out, it's a really colorful and pretty looking dish and very tasty, very tasty, nice side dish. A little, it's a little bit sweet, but it's not really sweet. So it's not like something that you would have for dessert or something like that, but it's, it's just a nice dish, especially for Thanksgiving because it's something different and healthy and just pretty on the table. So that is squash and apples, but you can have it anytime, not just for Thanksgiving, anytime you want. Okay, the next squash dish is a recipe that I found and played around with a little bit this summer because I had a plethora of yellow squash. So this, I was looking up yellow squash recipes and I found this in an old cookbook and it said it was called yellow squash southern style. So I knew when it said southern style that it would have uh, butter and eggs and probably breadcrumbs in it, and I was right. So um, this was really good, though. I really liked it. I made this several times, and I really liked it. I did tweak the recipe a little bit because they had added sugar, which it doesn't need any sugar because yellow squash are pretty sweet. And these are just like, these can be the crook neck squash or the straight neck squash, and they're uh, available on the grocery store most of the time um, near the zucchini. They're almost always there. And they're really tasty too. So this is a good dish. And again, this is something that um, I actually took in my lunch a lot, you know, just for my lunch and uh, put a little um, hot sauce on it. And that was really good. So this is the yellow squash Southern style recipe. You need three pounds of yellow squash peeled and cubed. And I also removed the seeds from them. If you don't want to remove the seeds, you do not have to. 
but I do not like the seeds that much, so I remove the seeds and then I cube them up. Uh, half a cup of dry breadcrumbs and not seasoned breadcrumbs. You can use regular or panko, but don't uh, use the seasoned ones. A half a cup of chopped onion, two large eggs, and a fourth cup of butter. Then a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, a fourth cup of melted butter, and a fourth cup more of the breadcrumbs. And that's going to be the topping, the melted butter and the breadcrumbs. Okay? So uh, does that sound Southern to you yet? I, this is pretty much any Southern vegetable casserole. So, <laughs> Okay, here we go. You're going to take the yellow squash, peel it and cube it, and you're going to boil it kind of like you would cook potatoes. So put it in a pot with about four quarts of water and just bring it to a boil and let it go until it's cooked enough that you can mash it. Okay, so you want to check that with a fork. And when it's soft enough that you think you can mash it, drain that. Then you're going to mash the squash and add a half cup of breadcrumbs. You're going to add the two eggs beaten, the onion, and the fourth cup of butter, salt and pepper, and mix. And just whip that up like you're whipping up mashed potatoes or something. Then you're going to spread that into a greased or buttered baking dish. About a four-quart size is what you would need. Spread it in there nice and even. And then you're going to take that last fourth cup of melted butter, drizzle that over the top, sprinkle with breadcrumbs, and then bake for one hour uncovered at 375 in your oven. And this comes out like... Um, I, I don't even know. It's this beautiful yellow golden brown top you'll have on it with your um, breadcrumbs and butter. And then it it kind of puffs up a little bit from the eggs. So I don't know. It's, it's like sort of like a squash souffle <laughs> when it's done. But it's really good. And it's a different sort of a side dish. It's actually a little bit on the sweet side. So if you want to cut back on the butter, you can do that. You can also, this recipe, you could substitute margarine or dairy-free spread for the butter and it would work just fine. And like I said, this is a really good recipe. And I even, for my own personal taste, added a little bit of Red Hot to it um, just for eating. And it was very good. So e these, I thought this is a nice time to do a couple of good fall side dishes for your Thanksgiving or holiday meals. And it's always nice to have a new vegetable dish to bring to the table. So I hope you give them a try. And I also hope you like them. Let me know what you think. And make sure to check us out online on Facebook and Instagram at Mary Mac Bakehouse, on Twitter at Mobile Mary Mac and Mary Mac Podcast, and on our website, MaryMacPodcast.com. You can also see us in person at Standing Chimney every Saturday in November. Thanks a lot for listening if you did. And if you didn't, too bad for you.